Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture. Hope you are liking our videos so far. This is going to start another series of detailed lectures as a lot of you have been asking for. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, heartiest request to keep sharing the videos amongst your friends and the links that we post in the groups and uh, you can also directly share from the YouTube and please do not forget to subscribe to our channel because it helps to grow the channel okay so why osteoarthritis the simple answer to osteoarthritis being discussed at the first detailed lecture is that it is the most common type of arthritis and is probably one of the most common topics that you'll see being discussed you know, during your exams and other scenarios okay so they say up to 10 percent of the adult population has arthritis or osteoarthritis and at least half of this population 50 percent of this population is elderly population with a mean age over 60 years for osteoarthritis that is what's mentioned in most of the books that you'll read the simple thing about osteoarthritis is that it is actually a misnomer. Osteoarthritis is not an inflammatory disease. And why I am saying this is because itis, the word itis, means inflammation, whereas osteoarthritis is actually a non-inflammatory disorder. So it is actually osteoarthrosis, so it is a degenerative disease. Just as you would lose your hair as you grow old or your hair become white as you grow old and your skin changes as you grow old similarly osteoarthritis is basically nothing apart from a degeneration of your cartilage in the knee okay so this is the thing to remember now it can be of two types as primary or a secondary osteoarthritis what that means is a uh, degeneration of the cartilage over time is a primary osteoarthritis but the arthritis can also happen secondary to many conditions which can include trauma you know diseases like development dysplasia of the hip perthes disease some metabolic disorders infection all these things can lead to arthritis later down the line but this is not degenerative arthritis but it's basically labeled as secondary arthritis so these are the two types of arthritis that you should remember when you talk about osteoarthritis as a primary as a secondary arthritis but when you just say the term osteoarthritis it refers to a primary arthritis okay now very characteristic feature of osteoarthritis is that the pain that the patient has is better on rest and it increases on movement. Why this is important is because when you talk about arthritis, the basic differentiation is from inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis. Now in contrast to inflammatory diseases, the arthritis in osteoarthritis is worse on movement whereas in inflammatory diseases it's better on movements and it's worse on rest so this is the thing that you have to remember uh, about pain in arthritis and osteoarthritis okay so these are the common features of osteoarthritis it's the most common type of arthritis seen in elderly is a degenerative disease non-inflammatory is a misnomer when you call the term arthritis and the pain is better if you rest and it increases as you do activities okay so these are the typical features that a patient with osteoarthritis will come to your clinic or present to you all this is the kind of stem that you will have in whatever exam you're sitting all right so how does a patient really present what are the clinical features of osteoarthritis okay. pain and difficulty to walk as we said is most characteristic feature now knee and the hip the two most common joints which are involved in osteoarthritis 
Now, although it's not an inflammatory disease, but because of the altered biomechanisms, there is swelling of the joint involved, could be the knee or the hip, or if there's any other joint involved. So, pain and swelling are the two most common characteristic features of osteoarthritis. Now, as the arthritis advances, as the arthritis increases, there's restriction of movement, and along with that, there is disability. Also, in very advanced stages, the joints <laughs> start becoming deformed, and this is one of the characteristic features of our advanced stage of the arthritis. Also, you should remember uh, that in introduction we said something about pain, better on rest, and worsen movements as differentiating feature for osteoarthritis. Similarly, systemic manifestations are usually absent in osteoarthritis. It's one of the key features. You can have some of the other joints like carpal metacarpal joints of the hand that can be involved in osteoarthritis. But mostly, these systemic manifestations or associated organ system involvement is absent in, uh, in, in osteoarthritis, which is also one of the key and differentiating features of osteoarthritis from inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. So these are the typical clinical features, pain and difficult to walk, especially in the knee and the hip, swelling, deformity, restriction of movements, disability, and joint deformity. So these are the key clinical features that we all need to remember. Okay. So any disease needs to be diagnosed. So how do you diagnose osteoarthritis? The first thing is obviously a detailed history and clinical examination, which should give you a hint or a brief overview about what the patient has. So any elderly patient who comes with typical features as described so far, you should be thinking about arthritis. Now, diagnosis is primarily based upon x-ray. Okay. So what are the key features of osteoarthritis specifically on x-rays? Okay. So the first is an asymmetrical decrease in joint space. Now, as I said, it's not a inflammatory diseases so usually one half of the joint is involved more than the other half it could be the inside or the outside of the joint depending upon what which one is involved first but it's usually an asymmetrical decrease in joint space and also it is not very common to have both sides involved like the right the left involved at the same time okay so asymmetrical decrease in joint space or for you um, simplicity just decrease in joint space is one of the characteristic features of osteoarthritis and what happens when the bone becomes weak there's a natural tendency of the bone to support right to to help prevent that problem so what does the body do in osteoarthritis it tries to build more bone around the joint and those small pieces of bone that you see around the joint in arthritis are called osteophytes, okay? And the third is subchondral sclerosis. Subchondral sclerosis is basically because of the altered pressure and the biomechanisms, the bone becomes hard and that area of sclerosis is a typical feature of arthritis that you see on the x-rays. Okay. Now, some con similar to subchondral sclerosis, just below the articular margin, so the word subchondral the word sub means below and the word chondral means cartilage so below the cartilage you'll see sclerosis and below the cartilage you'll see subchondral cyst all right and as we already said in the clinical features in advanced stage of arthritis you have deformity so these can be seen on the x-rays as well especially on the long leg films or a full-length x-ray so these are typical features of 
osteoarthritis on x-rays as we said we start with the clinical history and examination of a typical patient and then x-rays are the key to diagnose osteoarthritis okay now have a look at this x-ray picture that i'm showing you now and this depicts all the key features of osteoarthritis Now, as I discussed briefly before, it's very important to differentiate osteoarthritis from an inflammatory pathology or arthritis, okay? Because this is the most important thing that you'll need to consider when a patient presents with arthritis and you're thinking what kind of arthritis it is. Now, osteoarthritis doesn't exhibit the typical inflammatory pattern. The clinical diagnosis is based upon gradual onset of pain after activity and worse towards the end of the day. Okay, The pattern of joint involvement, so big joints like hip and knee are usually involved in osteoarthritis, whereas rheumatoid arthritis, which is the most common inflammatory arthritis, usually involves small joints, especially of the wrist and the hand. Soft tissue swelling is not that prominent as compared to inflammatory arthritis. The joint stiffness only lasts for a little bit of time as compared to inflammatory arthritis. Now, also because there's a lot of inflammation and infusion in inflammatory arthritis, it takes longer time to settle after rest in inflammatory arthritis where usually up to 30 minutes is the time required for the pain to settle down if you rest okay so these are typical features that should help you understand how to differentiate osteoarthritis from inflammatory arthritis and this should be remembered by everyone okay so so far we've discussed what osteoarthritis is what are the typical clinical features of osteoarthritis we've also discussed about how to diagnose osteoarthritis on an x-ray what are the typical features of osteoarthritis on an x-ray and not the least we have discussed about how to differentiate it from inflammatory pathology or arthritis now this is something that everyone's interested in how do you manage osteoarthritis now any disease in the world is initially managed by simple measures you try to remove the cause you treat it by painkillers if required so the simple measures come first so in terms of osteoarthritic management we first start with explanation and reassurance because as a patient the concern is what's going to happen what what is going to happen from now on how i'm going to be going to be in the next few months is it going to be okay so these are the main concern that the patient has so it starts with explanation reassurance in every patient okay then you have to correct modifiable risk factors especially obesity okay patients who already have osteoarthritis developing uh, and they're obese the first important thing is to tell them that they need to lose weight because a joint with a improperly functioning cartilage or a degenerate cartilage cannot bear the weight of the body as compared to a normal cartilage joint. Okay, so modifiable risk factor modification is one of the most important things to do in any patient with osteoarthritis. Then obviously, as we said, the pain is the main symptom in osteoarthritis you need to control pain but it is important to remember that control of pain shouldn't be based upon very strong painkillers it should be based upon simple pain medication like paracetamol and other NSAIDs okay exercise and physical therapy really really helps in osteoarthritis because it not only helps to build the strength of the muscle but it keeps the joint mobility to a certain level that's required for relief okay. uh, we should along with explanation reassurance consider factors like stress depression anxiety and try to lower them by helping the patient with these things okay if required they can be referred to other doctors to manage these things as 
people who already have stress or depression in their life because of other reasons may have aggravation of these symptoms because of pain related to arthritis or symptoms related to arthritis okay then these are the things you usually manage till the patient can cope so usually 6 to 12 months Uh, the general practitioners usually take care of the patient till this kind of time but what happens if the thing is worsening and the patient is not even able to walk for even a little amount of distance and has severe pain or is having severe disability and it started to affect the other joints for example patients who have advanced arthritis of the knee they can have secondary effects on their hip because the body weight bearing the body mechanisms have changed they can have development of arthritis in the spine on the back it which can last for long periods of time so this is something that should be considered and if this is the case then you should be referring the patient to an orthopedic surgeon for further intervention okay so just just going upon uh, so those are the principles of management but looking at the management in slightly more detail as this is the most important part of osteoarthritis that should be aware to everyone so as we discussed initial therapies about explanation the patient education and reassurance a very important thing when the patient comes to your clinic is to give them handouts which should explain what osteoarthritis is how is the management based upon and if you're thinking about surgical intervention what type of surgery is done what are the type of implants available how is the cost going to be what's a recovery period what's the physiotherapy like so that explanation does a lot to the patient in helping them understand what their problem is and how they are going to be managed as i already said physiotherapy and exercise plays an important part in overall conditioning of the patient not only for the treatment but also if you want to consider to prepare them for surgery preparing them for surgery by strengthening the muscles it plays a very important role in the patient outcome measures as a part of weight reduction diet is a very important thing and a lot of patients who are obese and are being managed for arthritis are referred to dietitians and now a lot of patients who have advanced arthritis may benefit from additional supports like walking sticks or a back brace or if they have any leg length dis- discrepancies they can benefit from heel raises occupational therapy can also help by aiding in the home by more efficient performance of daily activities and protection of joints so this is the basic treatment measures that every patient is started upon when they come for management of osteoarthritis now physiotherapy um, we talked about the patient should be referred for physiotherapy as it helps but what exactly does the physiotherapy program entail in osteoarthritis it's usually to correct the posture hydrotherapy program is really really helpful in general agility and mobility of the patients with arthritis and strengthening their muscles heat therapy and simple home heat measures for example using a heat pack or a rubber bottle with uh, hot water really really helps in decreasing the pain of osteoarthritis uh, exercises for other muscles helps to relieve the overall pain of the patient so this is the physiotherapy measure that are usually used for patients with arthritis medicines we have already discussed now a lot of patients can benefit from a local intra articular steroid injection a steroid injection can last up to 3 months in terms of pain relief and the important thing to remember is that too many steroid injections can be harmful they can not only predispose to infection but things like tendon rupture uh, can happen so although steroid helps but too many steroid injections should not be given now last but not the least which you might have heard a lot of times uh, i've also uh, put up a extra here is that if the pain is not resolved if things are worsening 
if the patient has severe disability or joint deformities then what to do as we discussed earlier briefly they should be referred to an orthopedic surgeon for further management and these are the sort of patients who usually end up having a joint replacement procedures like a total hip replacement or a total knee replacement now you can read more about this on nafmedvideos.com uh, we hope you like this video keep coming back for more do not forget to subscribe to the channel do leave your comments and share amongst your friends till our next video have a good one